Michael Soothing here, and, um, and we're going to go see if we can, even though it's overcast, see if we can't spot the lunar supermoon, full moon eclipse, also known as a blood moon. And, um, but before we do that, uh, so I'm going to drive way up the coast to a place I know. It's all overcast here where I am here, but for some reason I feel like it might be clear up there. Don't ask me why. I have no inside info on it, but I'm um, going to give that a try. But um, I've got my Planet Earth Solar System book here, and I'm going to read a couple of things about the moon, also known as Luna that I think are kind of interesting to me, that you might not know. First of all, when you have an eclipse and you line up uh, the Earth, the Sun, and the Moon all in a row, you know, which is, of course, what creates the eclipse. And in this case, you know, it's basically um, the Earth is in between the Sun and the Moon. So the Moon has gone into Earth's shadow. But that's a term known as Sizigi. You've probably heard that word, Sizigi. And uh, sometimes it gets stuck on other things, you know. But let me read you a couple things about our old friend Luna. Okay, first of all, there are many theories how the moon was formed. Did a large Mars-sized planetary body come crashing into Earth? And, uh, make this big amalgam of stuff around the Earth and then end up to be the Moon? We don't know. Did the Earth and the Moon form about the same time, four and a half billion years ago, but in very close proximity? We don't know that either. There are many theories on how it formed. But um, no one knows which one is actually true. Nonetheless, we know the Moon is very important to the Earth uh, for a number of reasons. Now, I have to dispel a couple of myths about the moon. Um, no offense to the band Pink Floyd, but there's no such thing as the dark side of the moon, okay? Um, there is a far side to the moon, but not a dark side because the far side of the moon gets all the same phases of sunlight as the side that we always see. See, the moon is in what's called synchronous orbit relative to the Earth. In other words, the same side always faces us in pretty much exactly the same alignment. So we never get to see the far side of the moon. Which, by the way, strangely enough, looks radically different than the near side of the moon. But um, the near side has all those big impact craters and things um, that were then filled in by volcanic activity, forming these big like lake kind of structures. Early astronomers thought they were seeing big lakes on the moon. Uh, it was just dark, basalt kind of volcanic rock filling in those giant craters uh, back when the moon had a lot of volcanic activity at the surface. Um, that stuff filling in is called Mariah. But uh, no, not the name Mariah. Here's an off-topic snippet for you. If you want to see something very unlikely in the film world, uh, go find that old 1960s film called Paint Your Wagon with Lee Marvin and Clint Eastwood. And in it, Clint Eastwood, it's a musical, right? You'll find Clint Eastwood singing the song they call the wind Mariah. It's great for comedic value, if nothing else, okay? So, little movie tips you get here, you know, even when we're talking about the moon. Anyway, um, of course, that's not spelled the same as the uh, 
M-A-R-I-A, that fills in the craters on the moon, which is also a great name, Maria, by the way. Some of my favorite people on Earth are named Maria, incidentally. Um, and my daughter sings Ave Maria in three different compositions, you know, Puccini's version. And anyway, we're going so far off topic, aren't we? That's how my mind works. I can't help it. Um, I'm kind of aspy, you know? Anyway, where were we talking about the moon? Here's my cheat sheet if I forget something. Um, yeah, all those craters that you see on the moon through telescopes, um, those were mostly formed about three and a half billion years ago during the late heavy bombardment, they call it. Now the Earth would have gotten um, hundreds and thousands of craters also during that time, going through the same bombardment, even worse, because the Earth's a lot bigger. But, um, but you see, uh, the moon doesn't have wind and rain and elements to scour the surface, you know, it doesn't have mountains that rise up and then get scoured you know, flat again by all the forces of nature that we have here. So those craters pretty much just stay there like that, other than maybe some, you know, dust coming from the solar system and forming a layer on the top, you know, uh, which is called the regolith. See, you're learning all kinds of things here, aren't you? But here's an important factoid for all you dieters, okay? The gravity on the moon is so much less than Earth that if you weighed 150 pounds here, you would only weigh 25 pounds on the moon. How about that, you dieters out there? So, translated for you folks in uh, the Netherlands, Finland, and Denmark, that means if you weighed 68 kilograms here, you would only weigh 11 kilograms on the moon. Isn't that great? So, no need to diet. Just go visit the moon, you know, and everything will be fine. All right, so, uh, early philosophers, such as Pliny and uh, Pliny the Elder, actually, they called him. I guess he was had the wisdom of age. Uh, and Aristotle, also believed that the moon caused insanity in people who were susceptible. So, uh, this is where we get the... And of course, the moon in Latin is uh, luna. So this is where we get lunatic from, right? The insanity caused by the moon. Supposedly, there's no scientific evidence that people act crazier in a full moon that there's more accidents or more admissions to mental hospitals and things. But I'm not so sure those studies are being done correctly. But anyway, just the fact that you've got the moonlight out there would indicate to me people would be more active and doing stuff. Um, let's see what we missed. Oh, there's a crater on the far side of the moon, not the dark side, the far side, okay, that's eight miles deep. The far side looks really strange. Maybe I'll find a picture of it and show you from when they had, uh, you know, explorer craft going around taking photos on the other side. It uh, looks nothing like the near side. No similarity, really. You'd think you were looking at a different planetary body entirely. And, um, by the way, the moon actually orbits the sun along with us. So, people think it orbits the Earth, but technically, you know, both the Earth and the moon are orbiting the sun. So, the moon is what's called tidally locked, you know. It used to spin faster than the Earth, you know, if this is the Earth, it was spinning faster, but eventually, because there's more weight 
more stuff, more iron or whatever on one side of the moon. That was attracted to the Earth. So over time, it got more and more attracted. It slowed down more and more and eventually just locked. So now it just always faces the same way relative to the Earth. And speaking of tides, do you know that the moon is basically precisely the right size, the right mass, and the right distance from the Earth to give us the perfect tidal action that we need to create the most diverse life and ecosystems on Earth. Let's see if the moon was bigger or closer or higher density. It would basically be very destructive to the Earth. We would have uh, all of our plate tectonic fault zones would be going crazy. We'd have a 9.0 earthquake every day, you know. Everything would get ripped up. Uh, but if the moon was further away, or smaller, or less dense, you wouldn't get the perfect tidal action that we get, where you have just enough mixing of the sea by it being pulled behind the moon. Uh, that big tidal bulge being pulled uh, a couple times a day. You get just the right mixing in the wetlands and everything to create all kinds of diverse life and life forms that work their way all the way up through the entire ecosystem of our planet. Now, in the supermoon we're going to look at, should we be so fortunate, uh, also called a harvest moon in this case, or a blood moon, because it will be in full eclipse. Uh, and I really hope to see it, because it will be the final one of my lifetime, I believe. It will be um, closer to the Earth than normal, making it much brighter and much larger, even to the naked eye. So, when it's closer, that's called perigee, you know, closer to us. It's kind of an elliptical orbit, you know. It's not a perfect circle, so... And when it's further away, that would be the apogee. Did my stomach just growl? I hope you didn't hear that. Might be time for a snack. Okay, so... Did I miss anything? Um, oh. The moon moves one inch further away from us every year. But that's a little hard to detect with the naked eye, given it's about 239,000 miles away. Okay. Like 400,000 kilometers away. Right. So, um, what else? Uh, the crater. Oh, the craters, on, big craters on the moon are mostly named after great uh, scholars and scientists and explorers and people like that. But I was thinking, if there's some small unnamed craters, maybe they could name them after pop stars or something, you know? Or uh, TV actors, you know, strange ones, you know? We could have the, the uh, Madonna crater or something. Uh, you know, the Britney, you know, I'm so out of touch. I can't even remember who the kind of pop stars are because I've never listened to pop in my life, other than when I was forced to, like uh, being strapped down and, you know, in that old Stanley Kubrick movie where, uh, what was the name of that film? Anyway, um, not 2001, you know. It was the film with the crazy British guys, or like a gang. They strapped that guy down and, and uh, you know, propped his eyelids open so he was forced to watch stuff on a TV. And uh, that's the only way I would watch pop singers. So, I like all other types of music, though, pretty much. 
Um, I think we've pretty much covered most of our basic moon facts now. I mean, we could go on for hours, but I don't really want to get into the heavily scientific stuff. We'll do that sometime when I want to put you to sleep a little bit quicker, okay? So, uh, let's go on our excursion and uh, see if we get fortunate enough to see the Blood Moon, which is the fourth one in uh, just a couple of years. Very unusual Tetrad event, okay? And not one this impressive will come along for another 18 years. At which time, I'm most likely to be in God's kingdom by then, I hope. Okay, so... I think wave sounds are extremely soothing to me. How about yourself? I could lay down in the sand here, go right to sleep. There we go. That's better. I'm hiding behind a rock. Try to keep the uh, wind out of the west. Keep the wind noise down, see? I'm gonna have some quiet solitude contemplation up here while I wait for the sun to go down. Struggling with some things in life that need to be figured out. Not always an easy task. The moon, when it comes up, if we can see it, it's going to be down in that direction. Above those bluffs down there. So I'm hoping this haziness will clear out. The sky's nice and clear down there. Should have a nice sunset. So we'll see what happens. We're getting a little of that late afternoon glow. This is like pudding stone, these rocks. You can see ancient layers of sediment. It's a nice backlit wave. back in our protected spot. Check out the sunset colors. And pelicans flying by. Things like that. I'm trying to wait for the moon to come up. I don't think we're going to see it. Because this cloud cover has moved in. 
so unfortunately, I'm not going to catch the moonrise as it comes up in blood moon eclipse. The sky is interesting. You can see patterns up there. People always see things in the clouds, you know. Myself included. Like um, this cloud arrangement here clearly indicates Einstein developing the theory of relativity. Okay, I'm just kidding. Okay, so it's like a big hand, a bear claw print to me. It's like a bear claw. But uh, anyway. Soothing wave sound. Sometimes I just like to watch ASMR. It's just waves or big waterfall. Things like that. Very soothing. I love water. The ocean. This big wave out here. to sit down. They'll fall right to sleep. They'll find me on the beach tomorrow morning. Fast asleep. Let's check out the sunset colors. Let's see what we have. Nothing too spectacular. Interesting in that direction. The sky's clear. You get over to the north, but that's not where the moon's going to be. The moon coming up in the southeast, down there. Checking everything out. I'm gonna run in front of those waves. All by himself. No mate. Do you think I should just be quiet and let the waves do all the ASMR talking? And the wind. Let's check out the sunset now. Do a little panorama of the sky. Got sort of a pastel, pastel colored hues tonight. Really nice. It's only to the south, southeast. So now it's time for moonrise, but we can't see it. Nice solitude, though. I'm the only one on this beach for miles. There's no one else here now but me and the seagulls. And that's it. I'm going to head back to the car before I get caught in pitch dark. All right, everybody. So I climbed about 200 feet on a little side road 
and um, went further north, hoping we could get a glimpse of the rising blood moon, supermoon. But it looks like we're still out of luck. There's just enough cloud cover to obscure it. You can't really see anything out there at this moment. So, um, I'm going to wait a little longer. Maybe when it climbs higher in the sky, we'll get a partial eclipse because it'll be brighter and we'll be able to see it that way. Meanwhile, as I was trying to explain back where we had the loud waves and wind, um, since this is the fourth blood moon in the last 18 months or so, a lot of people think it's some kind of celestial astronomical sign. I'm not so sure about that, but what I do know is that when you have a super moon, which is when the moon's elliptical orbit is closer to the Earth, the moon can be as much as 15-16% larger and quite a bit brighter, and uh, it exerts a stronger gravitational force since it's closer to the Earth. So it could possibly trigger uh, earthquakes and things. All right, it's very quiet and peaceful up here, up in the mountains. We're not too far from the ocean, but I went north and took a little isolated side road that I know about. It's a little spooky up here, I gotta tell you, but um, that just kind of adds to the ambiance and uh, the excitement, you know, of the moment. So, we'll check it back later and um, see if we can spot that moon. I feel like I'm on the quest for the Holy Grail or something tonight with this um, super moon hunt. You know, it just occurred to me while we're waiting for the um, some glimpse of the eclipsing moon. I brought a little snack along. Toffee peanuts. Definitely not on the prescribed diet program of the moment, but I took a long, long hike on the beach in the sand, like three or four miles, so I think I can, and I'm very hungry now, no dinner, and so I think I can eat a few of these with impunity, and the sound of the bag is kind of, you know, nice. So even though you can't see anything, maybe you'll enjoy, if you don't mind eating sounds, I'll eat these and talk about life a little bit. I wish I had some questions, some Q&A. because I don't know how personal I want to get. Let's just say, sometimes in life, you have to figure out some really tough problems. And we can be at a loss. We have to turn to God for guidance. Well, that's what I do. And, um, you know, I'm starting to see better out here, even though it's getting darker and darker. I can see all, some of the stars coming out. And that means if the moon gets high enough, I should be able to spot it. So far, though, no luck. So, I think the one patch of clouds 
that's heaviest in the sky is right where we would expect the moon to come up, which is a little bit unfortunate. Some of these peanuts I'm tossing out the window for the bird to find tomorrow. I don't want to eat them all. Wow, I just saw a satellite cruising overhead. I'd show it to you, but I can't. It'd be impossible to pick up on the uh, video camera. The moon was up high enough. We'd be able to see it. Well, I think that's all the yakking I'm going to do for now. I think that's all the eating I'm going to do for now. I can't see these peanuts, so I don't really know how many I'm eating. Can you see the bag? Just barely. From the glow of the um, little LCD display, that's the only light I have in here right now. come back a little bit later. And talk a little bit more. I wonder if any of you are seeing the moon tonight. So I have my Dasani water here. See, here's the looming Dasani ghost bottle, which you can barely see in the glow of the L. C, D, and, um, you know, I like to do this with the, the, the tap, so the OCD side of me, so I'll take a sip of this, mm. yeah, oh, that's good, so I did all that walking on the beach, and got really dehydrated, oh, that's very, very good, so, Anyway, put that back on. Gotta save a little for the long drive home. It's gonna be a little scary because Highway 1, the coastal route, is very dangerous at night because there's no divider and cars one lane each way, whizzing by each other 60, 65 miles an hour. So that's like 100 kilometers an hour for you folks in uh, the northern regions of Europe. But um, anyway, um, so there's a lot of bad accidents on that highway. Well, something just tried to fly into the window. Get get out of here. It sees the little LCD. I'm going to have to roll this up. Okay, folks. There it is. It doesn't want to focus. It doesn't want to focus, but I've got it. The blood moon. Not enough light. But isn't it interesting? There is the super moon, blood moon. I'm hoping it will come into focus and not just be fuzzy. I've got this on 30x zoom and I'm hand holding, so it's very difficult to um, keep it in the field of view. But I think as it gets higher, it's going to be easier to spot. 
Ah, oh, there we go. It's kind of eerie the way it's uh, oscillating the autofocus. That is so cool. Way cool. I wish you could see it live. It's far more eerie than on um, the video. A sight that I won't see again in my lifetime. I read somewhere on one of the websites they called this an astrological event, but it's actually an astronomical event. It was on a um, news site, so they should have known better, but people don't understand science. Yeah, if you're into astrology, it could be an event that's astrological. But if you're trying to report on a news site about a science event, then you have to call it astronomical. Anyway, it's fascinating. We're going to stay here and watch it for a little bit until it starts to come out of eclipse. Because that will be interesting. When the bright diamond appears on the ring of the moon as the earth shadow starts to pass to one side. Oh, I'm losing it. I've got to back up. There we go. we got it in view again. Yeah, it looks like the southern edge is where it's going to first come out of eclipse. And that will be very interesting to see. If we can focus on it, we'll find out. There you are, folks, the blood moon. Patience paid off. And our long drive north paid off. Because if we were down south, in my hometown, it's all covered in clouds down there. We wouldn't be able to spot it. Fascinating. I didn't think I'd be able to get this tonight, but I'm so glad I did. It's rising really fast, too, from the horizon and the cloud cover it was under. I'm going to put this on pause, and then we'll come back when it starts to come out of eclipse. All right, everyone, I'm back. And here we have the super moon, the blood moon, the full moon, the moon in perigee to the earth, we're getting close to the end of the eclipse event. Or, I mean, the total eclipse event, I should say. It should be starting to come out soon. With a bright little diamond showing on one edge. So we're going to zoom in a little. Until we see that happen. And, um... By the way, you know, the moon is um, about 220,000 miles away. And yet, it looks so close sometimes. Do you remember when you were really small and you thought things like, hey, I can shine a flashlight up in the sky and it will light up a part of the moon? I don't know if you ever thought that when you were four or five years old, but I did. Nowadays, of course, there are lasers powerful enough that you would be able to see it on the moon, but uh, that wasn't the case when I was young. So I'm interested to see what happens when 
does have a nice sort of coppery blood color, doesn't it? I would set up my tripod, but the problem is the moon moves so fast that uh, we'd lose it right away. Need a tracking tripod or something like that. You know, it's too bad we don't still have the sound of the waves up here. I can hear the waves in the distance, actually. Um, the ocean's only about a mile and a half away. I don't think you can hear them on this video, though, or it would be very, very faint, if so. But I'll put some of that earlier footage just in case. So earlier today, I was watching the NASCAR race. And um, I did an ASMR video on that a couple of weeks ago. So Jeff Gordon, the guy I'm rooting for, to stay in the chase. He came in seventh. And the guy that was in the lead today ran out of gas after running a fantastic race. It's all part of pit strategy, you know. And uh, so he didn't win because he had run out of gas. There's so much involved in strategy with NASCAR, with the pit stops, and um, trying to get, sometimes squeeze out enough gas mileage to avoid a final pit stop, but at the same time running at full speed. I don't know if you can see that the moon cleared this cloud cover if I s scroll down a little. This hazy cloud cover. You can see it's kind of hazy. We'll go back up here to the moon. The blood moon. The super moon. I hope this isn't too much movement. I'm, it's very difficult to handle the camera with a 30x zoom without it flying all over the place. But I'm doing my best. Because I really want to see the, uh, the diamond when it shows up. And I think it's getting close to doing that. We're going to see the first inklings of sunlight hitting the edge of the moon past the Earth's shadow pretty quickly here. Is it happening now? I can't quite tell. I think I think we might just be getting the beginning of that. Let's find out. We're being very patient tonight because this is such a rare event such a rare treat. I've been a sky watcher my whole life. Up in this spot, you can spot the Milky Way, but I'm constantly looking for things like iridium satellite flares, and, um, you know, I always watch the meteor showers when I can. Events like that I've seen three very interesting comets in the last 20 years or so that were visible to the naked eye. Hale Bob was one of the best. And then, of course, um, there was Cahotec. But the thing about Hale Bob, it had two big tails going in two directions. 
you know, it spawned a cult, a weird cult. What was that guy's name? Apple White. And he had a little band of followers. And they all drank the Kool-Aid, literally, um, to commit mass suicide because they thought they were going to go f fly off and join a UFO that was coming in behind the comet. Wait, I think we're just about to get the first inklings of sunlight. So weird. It's getting into some a little bit of cloud cover actually. For a moment there I thought we were gonna get that first little bright diamond of light. But we'll stay patient. Um have you ever seen an actual UFO? I don't mean aliens. I mean something you just completely could not explain. Most of them are, have a good explanation. Like I've seen the Phoenix Lights, if you look at that on YouTube, and I know exactly what that is. It's not a UFO, but I won't go into it right now. Well, what it is is uh, military flares. I've seen them dropping before in China Lake when I was there for two weeks for training and um, that's exactly what the Phoenix lights look like and were was um, a military flare exercise oh it's strange it's passing right over a cable that's uh, on this pole here holding up this pole so the moon this is kind of a strange effect have to move a little bit to uh, not have that cable in the way, but I don't want to even budge because I won't be able to stay focused. Okay, I think we're coming up on the first bright um, event that will end the total eclipse. Camera's having trouble staying focused. Here we go. You can see the ring down in the bottom. It's fascinating. Really quite interesting. That moon is moving fast. Very quickly. Since I have this loud vehicle here now, I'm going to pause and come back as the eclipse starts to end. Oh, he, oh there he goes. He's leaving. Okay. You know, I have a little ironic thing that happens with me. I don't know if this happens with you. Most people are more social than I am and um, what happens is I really like solitude sometimes so I'll go to a quiet place like a lake or a park or a beach and wherever I am I'll find a spot that's wide open with no people and inevitably within a couple of moments Whoever comes to the area comes right next to me, no matter how much space there is. It's God teaching me to love others and to not be so anal about being alone sometimes, you know. As you can see, the moon is starting to come out of eclipse now. And it's going to get brighter and brighter over the next few hours. It's getting more and more clear here, too, so I can see the Milky Way and more stars. Let's see if we can zoom in a little bit and 
see any of the features up. Really hard to focus. This poor camera says, hey, I was not designed for this, you know, this kind of filming. That's what the camera's telling me right now. It's so peaceful here. Yeah, so there's the ring. Um, it's like an eye, you know, looking down. Does anyone else ever see the man on the moon? I don't really see it typically until I look for two or three minutes and then I'm able to see it. Yeah, that's better. Maybe if we leave it small, smaller, it'll be easier. That's fascinating. So now we have seen the rising blood super or so, or more. Actually, I have to go look that up, because I'm not quite sure. I don't want to mislead you about this kind of a fascinating event. I'm getting kind of cold out here. I've got a little thin cotton short sleeve shirt on it. It's on. Uh, around the steering wheel, then I'll be okay. So, I think I'm going to turn this camera off for a little while until we get a little bit more advanced into the next stage of coming out of Eclipse. And then I'll show you since we're not going to have the full blood moon effect by then. That we've already gotten. And I'm so glad I was able to share this moment with whoever watches this. Some of my favorite people. Okay. Okay, now we We've driven a little ways down the road, and you can see it's coming about a third of the way out of Eclipse now. Just want to show you, we even might get some of the moonlight on the water down here. Let's see if we can spot it. A little bit of the moon glow. You can see the cloud cover down here was blocking the moon when it rose, so it's a good thing we went up north. Boy, now we just have the little bitty tail end of the eclipse at the end here. Don't know if the camera will focus on it. Ah, there we go. I think we almost have it. Focus, baby. Give us some features. Give us some moon features. Ah, there we go. Boy, that's hard to keep in view. Oop, 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 oop. But you get the idea. There we go. You can see some of the hand holding this thing is quite difficult. Super zoomed like this. Just a tiny bit left. You can hear a jet going overhead. So that's it. I've got the last 
major eclipse for a long time. The last tetrad of blood moons. All right, everyone. Not much voice left now, but in keeping with what we found on our video, actually seeing the event live, fortunately found the one little patch of sky in all of Northern California that didn't have clouds in it, serendipitously. Um, since I have great limitations on this little video cam as to seeing something in its large, full glory like that, I'm just glad we got any image at all live because it was exciting to see. But meanwhile, I wanted to show you an example of what the full moon looked like, or what the blood moon, super moon looked like, to some other folks in other places. So let's take a peek. There's the phases, okay? And, you know, we saw this phase, didn't we? And, um, we saw this phase, and we saw what I would call the eyeball phase here. And then, since I was a couple hours from home, quite a distance, um, I kind of skipped this part, because that just looks like, um, you know, a normal, say, half moon a little bit. But we did get the tail end, didn't we? We got the little bite, this little bite, on the tail end. So, see, I was actually showing you the wrong thing, um, but that's okay because um, that was interesting too. What I wanted to show you was some of the um, photos taken from other places. So here's one in Las Vegas. That was kind of interesting. Um, I've been up in this tower, which I think we ate dinner in the top of that tower one time. I went and played in the World Series of Poker there. But uh, no, you didn't see me on TV. Um, I won a tournament in the Santa Clara Valley at the old Garden City Casino. And um, that was part of the winning thing, go play in the world. But that's not what we're talking about. Here is... Um, the blood moon over the Griffith Park Observatory in Los Angeles. I used to see this all the time when I was a kid growing up in the hills, uh, but only in the winter, because in the summer there's so much smog you can't see it. But here's a very impressive shot. Uh, where's this? Oslo, Norway. Here's one that's like the eye, and uh, that's at London, that big London wheel, you know. So, that one's a little bit more like the shot we got with the video cam. But of course, these are still shots, so they're more impressive as to color and all. And here's one reddish glow by a statue of the Alexander III Bridge in Paris. The gold glowing horse there. That's kind of an interesting shot. Someday I want to do photography, much more advanced photography. Get a really good, um, you know, SLR, ESLR. And um, see if we can't do some. It must be above a mosque there. It's more yellowish there instead of red. Right? And then here's um, Queens, New York. So it's not a place I recommend for you to go visit, by the way. Queens, New York. 
no offense to anyone who might live there, but I've been to New York a few times on business, and it's just not my favorite place, that's all. So, I hope you enjoyed our live pre and post um, lunar blood moon harvest moon super moon eclipse moon tetrad moon ASMR and as I said in the prelude I think don't ASMR and drive. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.